Hello and welcome. In today's demonstration, I'm going to show you how Itential automates F5 load balancer provisioning. I'll start out by giving you an overview of the automation in Itential. The automation flow will consist of form input, which gets transformed into the payload needed for the Itential prebuilts, followed by two prebuilts for F5. First, we have F5 create pool and members, and second, we have F5 create virtual server. Both prebuilts include prechecks to make sure the request is unique, provisioning to apply the changes, and post checks to ensure the provisioning was successful. After the overview of our automation, I'll demo it on a live device. Okay, now that we've covered the agenda, I'll jump into the Itential Automation platform. On this screen, you can see a very simple workflow. There are three tasks. The first one is the transformation where we perform data manipulation. This converts the input data into payload for our prebuilds. A parent workflow such as this one is where you'll want to add additional business logic and or other prebuilds to achieve end-to-end -end automations. Inside the first prebuilt, this is where we automate the pre-check, provisioning, and post-check for the F5 pool and its members. Notice the purple task in front. This is the data transformation for this particular prebuilt. I'm going to show you how this transformation works. The goal of this transformation is to convert the input received from our users into the payload needed for the F5 API. On the left side, we can see the input, and on the right side, we can see the API payload. I'll give you an example of how this works. When I click Run, we can see the input data get transformed into the JSON API payload. This is the second prebuilt where we automate the pre-check, provisioning, and post-check for the virtual server and associated to the pool. The second transformation is the one used for the virtual server. Same idea, takes the input needed, applies some manipulation, and converts it to the JSON payload needed for the F5 API. I'll click Run and demo this example as well. Notice we can see the provisioning payload ready to go. Just as a reminder, these will be executed real time during our automation. Okay, now that you understand what the automation is doing, let's move into our demo. First, I'll show you the F5 load balancer. Notice there are no pool members yet. I'll use Operations Manager to run this automation. Just a reminder though, there are several ways to run automations with iTential. For today's demo, I'll run it using IAP. I'll fill out the information here and click Run to start the automation. I'm going to use some sample data that we can send into the F5. I'll add a couple pool members. I'll just name the first one member1, one, assign a service port, enter an IP address for it. Then I'll create a second member, and same idea, service port, and another unique IP address. Now, I'll enter some information about the virtual server. We'll call it test vs-1. I'll enter a virtual server description just used for the testing here, test virtual server, and a virtual server destination address, which we'll use 20.20.20.20. .20 .20. I'll assign these to port 443 for HTTPS, and I'll go ahead and click Run. Now that the automation started, I can click into the job to view the audit data. At this point, It'll just take a few seconds for the automation to complete, which it just has, and I can click Visualize to have a visual audit of what went on. As you remember, we have two pre-builds on this automation. I'll click into the first one, create the pool and members. You'll notice that the first step here has an error by the outline in red. That means that the pool did not already exist, which is a good thing. Therefore, it took the path into the provisioning step. Otherwise, it would have fallen out for a step for an operator to intervene. On this step with the provisioning request, we can see that the response back from the F5 shows that the pool and the members were created. We can also see the input payload. Next up, I'll go back to visualize on our parent workflow here and click into the second prebuilt. Over here, again, for the virtual server, we can see the pre-check. It receives an error message, which in this case was a success because the uh, virtual server was not already created. Now I can see the outgoing data for the provisioning step, noticing that the F5 has completed that provisioning request, and again we can see our input data here. I'll click close out of there, we'll jump back into our F5, and if I go into the F5 under the virtual server list, we can see that there is a new virtual server here, that test vs-1, and I can click into it and see what's uh, configured here from our input data. I'll also click into the pool list, and here we can see our pool that we sent in from iTential, and we can also see the members associated to it, members one and member two. All right, that completes today's demonstration. Thanks for watching.